The shop is now fluorescent free. I've switched everything to LEDs. No more fluorescence, no more ballasts. It's quite a good feeling. I was not going to share this video with you because I think it's not one of the more exciting ones, but a recent poll suggests that the vast majority of people have not yet converted to LED. I'm still using fluorescence, so I think this video is warranted. I wanna show you the LEDs I bought, the certain features that might be underappreciated. These I bought in a 24 pack, these Hyper Icon LED tubes, $4.62 each, put a link in the description. I wanna point out the features that I saved money on and I think are well worth the savings. Oh, and don't worry, I did not go put my old fluorescents in a landfill. I gave them to a family member who is living in darkness. Oh, quick note, I did go with the 4000K color temperature. This is probably another video entirely. I'm starting with 4000 as a base, nice, even, neutral color, where I'm gonna later on mix in some 3000s and 5000s to get both the nice blue pop and the red pop. Get that whole range in there. On the other hand, I think a lot of people go with 5000K and are very happy with it. So maybe test both, see what you like there. Hyper Icon. I am not affiliated with Hyper Icon, but I have used a bunch of their bulbs. In fact, I've done lots of testing on this style bulb around our house. I've sent a bunch of bulbs back and kept the Hyper Icons, mainly because the Hyper Icons didn't have any sort of crazy, weird, icky color cast, even at the 3000K range. Back to the other features, those have few more notable things to say about them. Glass rather than plastic. If you need durability, go with plastic. I want glass to save money. And also, I just had my fluorescence up the past few years and those never got broken. If you can go with glass and not break them, this will save you money. That's why I went with glass rather than plastic and it's gonna work out well, I think, unless things break and you know, I regret that and I wish I would've gone plastic. Clear instead of frosted. I think people go with frosted because they're afraid that the LED beam angle is too narrow. These bulbs have an extremely wide angle. You wouldn't wanna go frosted because that would just start reflecting upward, which is generally undesirable. And that's why I went with clear to save some of that light and to make sure that it's all going towards the shop. Ballast bypass only. Uh, that's in contrast to ballast compatible. That cost extra money and these are ballast bypass only. So I have to wire around the ballast, bypass the ballast in order for these to work. All right, single end powered, I do have an argument there. I think that's an important one to consider getting because that allows the creation of easy custom fixtures, such as this one here. This is just the first prototype using a couple strange connectors before I figured out that they actually sell connectors. Since the other end is a dud, just for mounting the thing in a fixture, all you have to do to power this is use the one end. All right, now let's take a look up top. The ceiling looks a little bit sloppy here, but that's because I designed the fill lights on the ceiling based on the work areas, the work surfaces, rather than the ceiling. Mainly what I wanna show you are these single-ended fixtures here. There's one, there's two, there's three. Those two don't have fixtures. This one has PVC pipe sliced in half as a fixture. Tip number one, Use a fuse. If you're doing any sort of custom lighting with custom wiring like that, definitely use a fuse to protect yourself or your shop from things you're not thinking about. In this case, that fuse there is rated at half an amp. Both of those lights are going through that fuse. They're on the sides of that red wire. There's a mechanical bond, then soldered, then double heat shrink wrapped, and then tied to the insulated wire to the side of it. If anything weird happens in that box, or if the garage door opens and catches something up here, if something falls, well, that fuse is gonna blow really quick. Definitely don't just think about a fuse, use a fuse. Tip number two, there is no tip number two. I just wanted to emphasize tip number one, use a fuse. All right, the parts. You mainly need the connector, and it's nice to have these little clips. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. I have a cold, I'm trying to beat it, and the harder I try, the worse my voice sounds. So I'm gonna get off of here and uh, just baby my voice for a little while and do my real job, which involves mainly typing. So <laughs> that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know. Stay tuned for the usability series. I have a bunch of videos coming up on that one about how to take some of the stuff off of our minds that our shops can handle. You know, let our shops do that thing so our minds can stay focused on whatever we're actually trying to figure out that's 
actually useful for our minds to figure out. So stay tuned for that.